Hi there, and welcome to this quick video. This time it's more like a showcase than a tutorial video, because this expands on my last tutorial video and will give you a few examples on how you can use GUIs to manipulate things in your game world. In this video I will show you how you can combine the information of the mouse tracking tutorial with the information of the GUI tutorial, how you can control the camera position with the GUI, how to control an object's motion with the GUI, and lastly how to toggle the visibility of an object through our GUI. For this tutorial you are going to need the game engine that comes with the latest version of Blender, and you should have watched my mouse tracking video tutorials as well as my first part of the GUI tutorial. Now the first thing I'd like to show you is how to use the information of the mouse tracking video and combine it with the GUI video. So this is the part that I sh showed you how to um, create different colored cubes based on which keyboard shortcut you hit, so one, two, and three. And we now want to move it away from the keyboard shortcut into a GUI. For that purpose we need to create a GUI scene and create our buttons. In this case I've created a red, a green and a blue button. Now we also need to add that scene to our main scene. So just go to the main camera and always, so it's, get, it's getting in, initiated on as soon as you start the game, always scene, add overlay scene and our GUI scene. So now if I start the game we will have these three cubes. Oh and since the GUI scene has no sort of light source they didn't have any color yet so I make the materials shadeless. So if I now go into the game engine you can see these cubes. So now it's still working with the 1, 2 and 3. Let me quickly activate the debug info so you can see that. So if I push 1 on the keyboard, it's the blue, 2 is the green, and 3 is the red cube. So now, let's delete the logic for the keyboard shortcuts and create a message system on these little um, your GUI buttons. So once this is clicked, so mouse over and mouse left button, we will send a message to our tracker that says red. So once it receives the message red, it's supposed to change the value of the um, build parameter to the one that corresponds with red. So let's first off set that up before we do all the others. So as soon as it receives the message red, it's supposed to change the property to, I think one is for red, let's check that out. Okay, no, one is for blue. So red is for three. Yes, so two, three. Now let's see if that worked. All right, let's check that to zero first. It's zero right now, so I can't build anything. If I click the red button, I can place red blocks. Now we also want to change it so that it only places a red block once. So what do we need to do? After we've executed the left click command, we just need to set the property back to zero. So we'll set up a property, assign build, zero. Now every time we execute one of these left click commands here, we just want it to set it back to zero. So we can just connect that. So if I'm now placing one, I can't click more, just one each time. So let's set that up for the green and blue one as well. We can just shift select all three and then go back to the first one we did. Go to object, game and copy logic bricks. Now we just need to change um, yeah, basically what they send. So this one sends green and this one sends blue. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see that in the video. Green and blue to the tracker. So. If the tracker receives the message green, um, it needs to change the property to two. And if it's receiving the message whoop, blue, it changes the property to the blue cube. So let's see if that works. 
red cube, green cube, blue cube. So this way you can well, basically make the GUI interact with our tracker setup. Now another thing we can do is connect the delete command to um, yeah, a GUI part. So for that purpose I'll just use the green cubes and um, if the green cubes receive the message and they will edit the object and end the object. So now we just need to keep the name of this object in mind with this which is green and I'll go to our GUI and create a button that will let us delete this these green cubes. So if this is clicked or let's just again copy the logic object game copy logic brick so we don't have to set it up again and again this will message the green cube and so we'll go back to the game place some green cubes and end them so this way you can fully interact with the objects in your game and combine them with a GUI another thing that might be quite useful is changing the camera position with the GUI for that purpose we will frame keyframe the camera to certain positions and then access those keyframes through our GUI. So first of all we will go to frame 1 in our timeline and this represents the first position we want the camera to be in. So we will hit I and frame the um, location and rotation. Then we will move onward just one frame and move it to our second location and frame the location and rotation and move onward to the third frame and get to the third object. This might be very useful for some sort of security camera system or third person view where the camera is supposed to change on which um, yeah, button you click or you want several scenes to interact with and find objects or whatever you can imagine. Now we will go to our GUI layer and I've already set up these three buttons to contain the standard mouse over and click um, logic and once they are clicked they are supposed to send a message. This message will be directed at this camera which is called camera. So it's important to know the name because the second camera has a different name. So it will send to camera subject and this will be for frame 1. This one will send a message to camera subject frame 2 and the third one messages the camera with the subject frame 3 or just 3 and now we need to set up if the camera receives these messages it should play its animation according to the frames so if it receives the message 1 it goes to action which is um, the logic for playing animations and use the camera action we created Start frame for the first one is 1 and end frame is 1 as well. Now we need two more, so message, message sensors for 2 and 3. Two more actions for our camera, start frame 2, end frame 2, and for our camera, start frame 3, end frame 3. So connect those. And now if we play this um, game, so to say, we can change the camera position with these three buttons here. So this way you can, as I've said, create several scenes which you can skip through or maybe even some sort of menu on different um, layers. So this is the first layer and if you then click on, I don't know, options, it will pop up with a different um, menu. You can create a second HUD here that then contains the options and so on and so forth. So another thing we might want to do is control the motion of an object through the GUI. For that purpose I've created this cube and it's supposed to move to the right. So I've also created this button here on the top right for the GUI and this button again is just with mouse over and left button the standard logic and it's going to send a message to the cube which just says go so it knows it's supposed to move. Now we go back to the scene and if the object receives the message go it's going to move to the right. So motion 
on the positive x-axis by 0.1, let's say. Now, if we were to start the game and click this and hold it down, it will just move this 0.1 units, so that's not really helpful. How do we change it so that if we hold it down, it resends the message continuous, continuously? For that, we will just need to set true level triggering, as we've used it er uh, a lot of times in other tutorials already. And now, if we was just start this and hold it, it will move all the way. Now you might think there are no reasons why I would want to create this, but obviously just to keep moving to the right is not really sense. It doesn't make sense in a way. So you can, I don't know, you can think of a lot of situations where this might come in handy. So you, for example, get create a game where you can, I don't get into a car or whatever, or get into some sort of crane or whatever you can imagine and through a joystick you control the crane and the joystick then is represented by a GUI so you can do a lot lots of things through controlling with the GUI. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to control visibility through the GUI. So this might be very interesting to create tooltips or I don't know anything you can make pop-up menus whatever you like just by controlling the visibility of objects. So first of all, we will create a plane that acts like a tool, let's say a tooltip for this cube. So we don't know what, the cu what this cube means, so we'll get this tu tooltip if we click the um, question mark. And this question mark will be represented by this GUI plane. Again, with our mouse over, uh, mouse over and left button logic. Now the left button is not on uh, true level triggering, as we only want to send messages once. Now let's give this the name tooltip or toolbar, whatever, tooltip. Go to the GUI and once it's clicked, it sends a message to this tooltip show meaning, let's say show, so it knows it has to show or yeah, show. Now, if it receives this message, we can now say, for example, it's invisible on startup and if it receives the message it gets visible but this way we can't toggle between the visible and invisible state so i'll show you now how to create a toggle button so to say so if it receives the message show it's not affecting the visibility but affecting a property and this property will make a boolean which means you can decide between true and false and i'll call this this for visibility so if it receives the message from the button, it will toggle, uh, toggle our property, meaning it will change the state. So if it's false, it will go to true, and if it's true, it will go to false. And it will toggle it. So now we just have to set up if the property is true, the object is visible, and if the property is false, the object is invisible. So create visibility actuators. So if this is true, it's supposed to be visible, and if this is false, it's supposed to be invisible. So if we now test that out, since this is false from start, the tool tip is invisible, and now we click the button, and it becomes visible, and we could add any text here, or we could add a new button, whatever you can think of. So you could create conversations with that or yeah, basically anything. So this is really just some sort of tool for you to create some new stuff in your game. And if we click it again, it will hide again. So this way you can create hiding and showing of objects. You could also create interacting interfaces. So if you click something in the game or push a button, it will show the interface of the object and then you can manipulate numbers. Um, which I will also create a tutorial on in the future, how to create some sort of door code that you have to enter. But that's it for this tutorial. As I've already said, it was more of a showcase than a real tutorial. Um, but I still hope you got some inspiration and got some techniques that you can use for your game. And if you have any questions, encounter any errors or find any issues, just leave me a comment and I'll try to solve it with you. Thanks for watching.